welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and today I'm going to be taking you through profit and loss, markups and discounts. Now this is part of our consumer arithmetic series. If you haven't watched our first couple of videos on percentages, especially the second video on further working percentages, you might want to stop now and go back and watch that one because some of the concepts that we're going to be covering in this video require you to be able to work with a percentage. This particular video we're going to cover some key terms profit loss markup and discount we're also going to look at how to calculate profit and loss and do some worked examples and then talk about what's coming up in our future videos this particular video is aimed at our year 11 math students right across australia year 9 business students and adults most businesses operate to make money for its owner in some cases the business may be owned by an individual or a family called a sole trader such as a couple who may own a corner convenience store or a plumber who works for himself in other cases the business may be owned by a small group of people called a partnership such as a group of dentists who practice together in other situations the business may be owned by a company possibly listed on the stock exchange and owned by many people or businesses called shareholders the money that comes into a business is called income the money that leaves a business is called expenses. When income is greater than expenses, the business makes a profit. This is the ultimate goal of most businesses. On the other hand, when expenses are greater than income, the business will make a loss, which is very undesirable. From time to time, a business will change the price of its products. Sometimes a business will reduce a price temporarily, such as in a sale. The purpose of this is to excite customers and hopefully increase the amount of items sold. Retail stores in particular will reduce prices at key times to clear out old stock and make way for new items such as after Christmas, at the end of a season or at the end of the financial year which is the end of June in Australia. The reduction to a price is called a discount. Retailers will call attention to this in store by either advertising a dollar discount or a percentage discount. Sometimes a business will increase the price of a product. This is done to either make more profit or to cover an increase to the costs of the business. This price increase is called a markup. Every business will implement a markup on the cost to the business. For example, if a business buys a product for $5, it will mark it up to perhaps $7 in order to sell it and make a profit. When a business makes a markup to increase its price, it has to be implemented very carefully to ensure that loyal customers are not upset by the change which could drive them into the arms of a competitor. Let's talk now about how to calculate profit or loss. And it's very simple, three easy steps. Firstly, you're going to add all of your sources of income. Now in a business, most of your sources of income will come from selling goods and services. However, sometimes you may have a source of income from selling investments or selling assets of the business. So we need to add these all together and then we end up with the total that we then use in step three. Step two, however, is we need to add all of the expenses of our business or our enterprise. And lastly, profit is equal to our total income, take away total expenses. So it's a fairly easy thing. Add them up, take it away. Now we're going to apply that principle now to some worked examples. In work example one, we've got Ella, who's an electrician. Her listed income for the different jobs that she's completed this week are as follows. She has also had to buy some materials from the hardware store costing $950 fill up her ute twice for $125 and pay for some parking which cost $25. She also paid $40 for her mobile phone bill and we need to calculate her profit for the week. So remember our three easy steps. First of all, we are going to calculate her total income and we need to show our working. So we're going to put a little heading there, total income equals, and then list all of the numbers, then get your calculator out and add them up $5,430. Step two, we're going to add all of those expenses. So we've got our heading again to tell whoever's reading our example what we're doing. We're going to add those expenses up and give a total of $1,140. And now our final step is to take one away from the other. You should write a formula. Formula Profit is equal to total income take away total expenses. And those numbers have come off our previous calculations. So our profit for the week is $4,290. So well done, Ella. That's a pretty good profit. Worked example two. It's quite similar. We've got Andy, who's a self-employed barber. This is his income for the week, Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. His rent for the week was $500 and he had to play, pay two employees $300 each. He advertised the business for $400 and purchased some hair products. Calculate his profit for the week 
as a percentage of his sales. So there's a little bit of a difference here. We need to be able to know how to work with a percentage. So firstly, same step again, we're gonna calculate his total income. Add them all up and we end up with a total income of $1,595. Next, we need to calculate his expenses. Now, we have a few little extra expenses in here. We've got the 500 for the rent. We've got two employees, $300 each. So we're gonna multiply that 300 by two. We're gonna add on the advertisements and also the hair products for a total of $1,785. Now we need to calculate his profit. Now his profit is the total income, take away the total expenses. And you notice that he spent more than he earned in that week. So he's actually got a profit of negative $190. Now we don't call that negative profit, we actually call that a loss. So when you notice that your number's gone negative, you're gonna change the word from profit to loss. And he made a loss of $190 for the week. Now our next step there is we need to calculate that as a percentage of his total sales. So we've already calculated the total sales and our percentage profit is gonna be the profit that he earned, which was a loss, divided by the income and multiply that by 100 to turn that into a percentage. So let's do that. We're gonna substitute that negative 190 divided by the 1,995 multiply it by 100 and we get a profit of negative 11.9%. We could also rewrite that. He's made a loss of 11.9% of his income. That's not very good at all, Andy. Okay, worked example three. A store sold some mints for $11.50 a kilo, but the store discounts it to $5.50 a kilo the day before its expiry date. Calculate the percentage discount. Now, once again, these are skills requiring you to use a percentage. So you would recall that our discount is going to be equal to our original price, take away our new price. So we need to work out what the discount was in dollars first. So to do that, we're gonna do a very simple takeaway and our discount was $6. Now we need to calculate the percentage discount. And whenever we're calculating a percentage of something, we always do it divided by the original number. So we're gonna take that discount in dollars and divide that by our original price, which was $11.50. So let's substitute that information into the equation. And we got a discount of 52.17%. That is an amazing saving. Our next worked example is an electronics store who has discounted a $1,500 laptop by 25% in an end of financial year sale. We need to calculate the new price, the sales price. So once again, we're using those percentage skills. So calculate firstly your discount in dollars. We take that original price of $1,500 and we're gonna multiply that by the 25% discount. And that's gonna look like this. We're gonna change that 25% into a decimal and multiply that by 1,500 and we get a discount of $375. So we haven't finished yet though. We've only found what the discount was in dollars. We actually need to find the sales price. And to do that, our sales price is gonna be our original price less the discount in dollars. So that's going to be $1,500, take away $375, and we end up with a sale price of $1,125. Now, there is a faster way to do that. We talked about that in our second video on further work with percentages. Let's look at the shortcut. We can take the sale price. To find that, we can multiply our original price by 1 minus the percentage discount, which is 1 minus 0.25. 1500 times 0.75 gives us $1,125. So we arrive in the same place, we just get there a little bit faster. And we're now up to worked example five. A car dealership had to mark up all its cars by 30% due to increased costs. The new price of a car was $25,000. Calculate the original price. So we are increasing by a percentage in this particular example. Discounts are decreasing by a percentage. And in this case, we've got the new price, we've got the percentage, we need to work backwards to find the original price. This is a little bit more complicated. And in my experience, students find this quite tricky. And that's why it's always good to write a bit of a formula to help you work it out. So firstly, this is a formula you're gonna to wanna to work with. The percentage increase is equal to the new price, take away the old or the original price, and it's always, always, always divided by the original price. So this is our starting point. Let's put some information in there and we'll end up with a bit of an equation. So we know the percentage increase was 0.3. 
and we know that we finished with $25,000 and I'm gonna call the original price X just to make it easy to work with. So I've got X on the top and X on the bottom of the equation. I need to find X all by itself in order to be able to solve the problem. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply both sides by X and that will get rid of the fraction component. When I do that, I've got 0.3 X on the left hand side and X is gone off the denominator on the right hand side. Now I can solve for X. What I need to do is on that right hand side of that equation, I've got take away X. So I'm gonna add X to both sides and that will collect my like terms. So now I've got 1.3 X on the left is equal to 25,000. Now I've got one final step. At the moment, X is multiplied by 1.3. Let's divide both sides by 1.3 and X is gonna be equal to $19,230.77. Now have a look at the original question. Do you see X anywhere in there? No, you don't. We called it X, we need to calculate the original price. We called the original price X, but we need to write a statement at the end. And here's our statement. The original price was $19,230.77. For today, we've gone through those five worked examples really quickly. Coming up in our next video, we have wages and salaries, budgets, GST, exchange rates and dividends. And if you've got something that you would like to request a video on, why not contact us at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com. I'd also like to welcome all of our new subscribers this month. Thank you so much for joining us here on the channel. And why not follow us on Facebook as well, McClutchy Mass. We will always let you know when a new video is ready to watch. There will also be some fun facts, some tips, and perhaps in the future some competitions as well. Thank you so much again for joining me today. This is McClutchy Mass. I'm Natalie McClutchy. Have a lovely day.